One of the other easy ways to handle limit questions is by factoring. If you plug 2 into this expression, you'll end up with, I don't know, something on top and 0 on bottom. I don't care what's on top. You can't divide by 0, so you can't just plug 2 in and expect to get a number out. But because the top is quadratic, I recommend you factor. This will equal the limit as x approaches 2 of. I will keep my x minus 2 on bottom. When you factor this, you're looking for two numbers that multiply to positive 8 and add to negative 6. That's negative 4 and negative 2. And you'll notice that an x minus 2 factor cancels from both the top and bottom. This means it was a removable discontinuity. If you graphed this, it would give you the graph of y equals x minus 4. That is a straight line with a y-intercept of negative 4, but there would be a hole here at x equals 2. Now, I've just tried to show you an open circle there. I probably should have drawn it like that, broken, which means that the line exists everywhere except for the exact value of 2, which is what we have here. Anyways, now that that's cancelled, we can plug 2 in. 2 goes in for x, you subtract 4, and it's negative 2, which is exactly what the graph is giving us. If you follow this line from the left, it's getting closer and closer to negative 2 on the y. And if you follow this line from the right, it's getting closer and closer to negative 2. The line, the limit as you approach negative, or the limit as you approach positive 2 from either direction is negative 2. It's just that the function itself doesn't exist there because it's a removable discontinuity. Yeah? Factoring's easy. Factor, cancel, figure it out. It's not too bad. Let's do one more example. Here's another one with a quadratic on top. I'm going to factor it. Now I'm actually going to factor the top and bottom here, just so you can see that it's possible. Uh, I want two numbers that multiply to negative 30 and add to 1. That's going to be positive 6 and negative 5. And in the bottom I notice that there's a common factor of 2, which gives me 5 minus x. Now I also included this example so you could see that x minus 5 and 5 minus x are factors which can cancel with each other as long as you leave a negative one behind somewhere. Here's what I mean. I'm actually going to factor an extra negative one out of this so you can see what I'm doing. x approaches 5, that's x plus 6, x minus 5. I'm going to have factored an extra negative out. So my negative x becomes positive x and my positive 5 becomes negative 5. Ah, now the x minus 5's cancel. I'm a big fan of simply canceling these two and adding a negative manually because I've done this so many times, I know it always works. You might want to fully factor it like I have, cancel the two terms that you know cancel, and notice that the negative is left over until you pass the novice stage, suckas. Anyways, now that I don't have an x minus 5 in the denominator, I can plug 5 in. I get 5 plus 6 over negative 2. Apparently this limit is negative 11 halves, or 5.5. Pretty easy. Factor, cancel, and plug. Bada boom, bada bing. Best of luck.